Hi, hello everyone. Welcome again to another episode of the Silk Stocking Sisters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Teresa J. Canada. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I like to just use this episode to just kind of review what we've covered um, and some intentions moving forward. Um, and let me just say this. When I began this journey on the podcast route, I was unsure um, of where it was going to go and how it was going to go. Of course, that always happens when someone's starting something new. But I always say you start from where you are. Um, you know, sometimes people think you have to have everything in place. You're going to have all this. And I believe if you have a mission, if you have a goal you want to seek, you just start from where you are and you go from there. So I'm basically practicing what I teach, so to speak. Um, so that's where I am. So th so we're, this is where we are several months down the line here. And I'm grateful for this time and effort to be able to be here several several months down the line and just to kind of go over what the intentions were and where we are at this point now initially my goal was just to have two episodes a month that hasn't happened folks it hasn't happened you know hey what can i tell you i keep it real so in essence i've had a pod once i started i've had a podcast every week um except for one week i think in december but in essence I'm just grateful for the people who've agreed to, to participate in this journey with me, which means all my guests who have done that. They've allowed me to continue this journey, and I, I'm very grateful to them and thankful to them. And they've been able to share quite a bit of information about their situations of dealing with school desegregation, the legal issues, uh, the experiences that they may have gone through, the books they've written about their experience or about the, the issues that happens in the North and Midwest. Um, so we're still covering, we still have a lot more ground to cover, but we've covered a lot of ground already in terms of people and experiences in uh, the North. Uh, and it's always prompted by the fact that um, many people didn't know, like one of my students said, she didn't know the schools were, were segregated in the North. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and this is 2000, in the 2019, whatever it was, I, I couldn't believe she said it. But, you know, I can understand why, because people just don't know. If you don't reach out, if you don't read, um, if you don't learn from some context, either in a, in a school setting or exposed to it or people who've had that, then you would not know. So that's one of the goals of the podcast is to share information and knowledge so people will know because um, knowledge is key. It's key. Um, whatever you plan to do in your life, it's key. So I'm using this as a way in which to share with people op options that they can take in themselves and learn about things because it may give them upper opportunities to consider other things in their lives or their friends' lives and their family's lives. That's what this is about, just sharing, sharing information. Um, so, you know, we've covered quite a big, big you know, bit, quite a big number of challenges um, this in these episodes. Um, and I think there'll be more to come. Uh, I'm looking forward to other people to participate. And hopefully you'll share this with other people that you know and have them subscribe to the channel, the YouTube channel, and to so I can still continue to share this information uh, as long as I can. And let's just go over what we covered so far for the last 10 episodes. So um, we had the uh, Boston public school experience again with an individual who actually was part of it, who happened to have been the first um, first black woman mayor in the city of Boston. And I'm grateful for her presentation, which she shared and what she suggested might be doing moving forward. We need to make this a better place for everybody. Uh, and not and we're still we're still in that journal. And of course she's doing her part of, of what she's doing um, in Boston now um, and based upon her experience. We also had a former teacher and administrator and former guidance counselor in the New York City Public Schools who talked about her experience and her thoughts about how, whether or not it made a difference by her being there, being a black woman, did it, do you think she made, you know, to make a difference in the education and how students were receptive to her that where she grew up? And she actually basically 
talked about the experience in the in, in the Bronx, um, which is a borough of New York City. So that was a very interesting uh, dynamic. Um, then the other guest we had was a, a civil rights attorney who talked about, uh, I'm just, you know, just pleased and so honored. I met him several years ago when I started, started as a professor. And, and so we were able to reconnect and he agreed to come and talk about the Chef O'Neill case, which was the case that he was involved in, that he kind of, he argued with, with the state of Connecticut's Supreme Court decision. Um, and that was in the 1990s. And they just even recently, they've come to some resolution after all those years um, to come to some resolution in terms of making a difference because of this. Uh, basically, the Chef O'Neill case is what I consider like the uh, uh, the state of Connecticut's Brown versus Board of Education case. It was a significant legislative piece and decision. And I just just so grateful that, uh, you know, I was able to have uh but Professor Britton to come on and talk about that. So, um, you know, those are the things that we need to know about because many people didn't know about that. So that was something I was able to share with the audience. So from having, you know, Miss Miss Janie, who was the um, Boston mayor for a time period, who's still doing a lot in her community and doing a lot in Boston, um, to Miss um, West, who who I've known for years, and um, you know, it's interesting, folks. I know some folks, okay? So anyway, it's just so happened. You know, I believe that it's important to connect. And little did I know that there are some people, I mean, really, literally, I did not know people who I've known for years, their experiences and exposure to situations which were somewhat similar to what I had gone through, um, what I talk about in my book with the Silk Stocking Sisters. So um, other than um, the, the other person who I had was, from the Boston, New York City, New York State, Boston, New York schools. And that was my former freshman roommate in college. Go figure. I mean, after all those years, I mean, I did not literally know. I mean, we've been friends since college. Did not know. I mean, I knew she lived in Buffalo, but I didn't know the intimate details of her experience until we had our interview session. I mean, I was surprised. I was amazed. I'm like, how did I not know this? And I'm just grateful for her sharing that information because people just make assumptions about, you know, situations and, you, you know, what she's accomplished since then and also having accomplished children as a result. So that was a very, very uh, good to know and also share. So people, you don't know who, who you know and who would they go through until you ask. You have to ask them, okay? You know, um, so um, that was a good piece. And then I had... Um, my own personal experience, which people didn't know either, because I was one of the first black, you know, one of the first three black teachers who actually was part of a um, uh, experience in the Cincinnati, it's a suburb of Cincinnati, um, but it's a Cincinnati public school. I was a public school teacher in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was my first teaching experience as a, a fourth grade classroom in, in, in Ohio. Um, and I didn't think about it. I said, well, maybe you need to know that story too. But it was a very interesting experience. It was my first teaching experience as an elementary school teacher. Um, and I also learned a lot from that experience. But I also realized that what happened is that it, the need was there because there was a growth of the change in the demographics of the, of the neighborhood because there were more middle-class Blacks were moving into that neighborhood, in that, in that, that zoning area, whatever it was. So they needed to have you know, I think there was a, some legal situation going on as well. I don't recall exactly what it was, but it may have been. But I just know that, you know, when I think about, you have to be prepared. You never know what's going to happen in your life. You have to just be prepared. And I teach some of my students, just be prepared, you know, the best that you can be and see where it goes. But if had I not been prepared um, and didn't have the credentials and license or experience, and I didn't have the experience yet, but I had the credentials and the license and you never know where you end up. So just be prepared because you never know what's going to happen. That goes back, I'm old school, so I go back to like, you got to have as many licenses and degrees as you can have, so you can do your thing. That's it, all right, because you never know. So that was my experience as a Cincinnati public school teacher. Um, and some people didn't even know that. Um, so now you know, okay? Um, and so that was interesting um, to just talk about that experience. Also, I had my cousin's husband <laughs> didn't realize that it's like, family member too, I didn't realize that he had been part and what he went through and his experience from the Cincinnati uh, public schools and um, 
trying to get a, his family members wanted him to get the best education. And his talk about how he left his neighborhood, Lincoln Heights, which was a predominantly uh, black community in Cincinnati, which people like, I, you know, uh, quite a few people come out of that community um, during his era. Um, and it was significant. Um, and so he was able to go to another school, but then he ended up coming back to his school. So listen to his, listen to the episode again, if you haven't, don't remember, but all it's about is getting the best uh, opportunities possible for your child. Um, and he, when he went on, you know, Ohio State and get his degree in zoology, you know, well-educated and, and successful professional um, and, you know, author of a book that, you know, we discussed at the, in the episode, which is important. And I thank my cousin for just letting me know. I, I had no idea, no idea. Okay. So that was, this was interesting. So that's why I said, you don't even know, even family members who have, or, or relatives that have had experiences in places that you had no idea they had experiences in, in terms of dealing with a better education and so forth and so on. Um, and of course, I take two episodes and I talk about the history of the desegregation process in New York State, how it began, and in, specifically in New York City. And, and it, it led to my experience uh, having attended PS6. So that was two episodes. I did my little education piece, people, all right? Did my little education piece. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and um, uh, and then, I, of course, I talked about school choice, um, just a, a, some mental information about school choice. And I mean, I mentioned that because it's it's something that was applied um, to because you the process, people were not willing to to bus or, you know, transport students across town, across cities and areas to to, to impact the difference in terms of segregated schools and so forth and so on. So something had to be devised to consider options um, as we move past the 70s uh, and into the 80s and so forth. Um, and some of those actual options are, be, are still being used to this day to offer options to be able to have a more uh, diverse environment in schools. And that, of course, I mentioned about school choice. And one of the choices was magnet schools. And I discussed very briefly what magnet schools were and described what school choice, choice was as well. So that gave people some insight as to the things that ha are taking place now um, um, because the effort to bus and, and transport students is not really a specific way in which parents want to deal with things. But the thing about school choice is it gives parents more choice in a sense. Um, where it may have been limited in the past, but the, the efforts to try to do what they did in the past is not there, you know, it doesn't exist anymore. So I'm just concerned about how we're gonna do this moving forward in the future. How do students see each other uh, from different backgrounds and cultures and so forth? How does that take place now? Um, if it's not taking place in school, where does it happen? Um, and we still pretty much live in racially, social, racially uh, isolated environments, you know, um, but the, 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 the key issue here is that economics plays a significant role. And I, I just think that if you don't see people of all walks of life where you grow up, then you're not necessarily going to pursue that. Um, and, just, and if you only see certain types of people from certain cultural and, and, and ethnic backgrounds, then you only see that. I mean, I'm a college professor right now. And there are students who've never seen a college professor who, who who's from me who looks like me or from my background. So, and then this is this is pretty recent, okay? But then, what's their thoughts about me? If they've never seen anybody like me in this setting. What are how their thoughts are, and so forth and so on. So we have some challenges, and we need to work on those challenges and find a way that people that can be in every setting. And and this is not 1960s. This is 2024. So we 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 still have a lot to do and a lot to grow. Um, I'm challenged by this, and I'm hoping that this podcast can open up venues where people can discuss and, and make some corrections and, uh, and and redefine how people connect of all ethnic and racial backgrounds across this country. Um, that's the, that's the goal, so that we can learn from each other and learn about each other and learn to live with each other. So, having said that, I look forward to you signing up, signing in again for the next couple episodes that's coming down the pike. And at some point, I don't know if, if I run out of people who want to be interviewed or 
or something else, I, I may have to go back to my once, twice a month uh, options that I started out with. But so far, we're going to be okay. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Silk Stocking Sisters. Have a great, wonderful rest of the day, evening, hour, or night, wherever you are, across the city, across the state, across the country, across the, around the world. And I thank you so much for participating and joining me on this journey. And have a great one. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye now.